Bramble Ghast is a new Pokemon released in Gen 9 that I never thought much of. It's got pretty average stats and is generally outclassed by superior choices in Gen 9 OU. But ever since I saw this Pokemon used in a Smogon Premier League game by the player crying, I've wondered if it had any purpose. If a Pokemon is brought to SPL, it must do something. After thinking about it, I realized that Bramblegast could act as a pretty nice spike setting lead. It just outspeeds Great Tusk and Glimora, has access to Rapid Spin, and since it's a ghost type, it's immune to Rapid Spin as well. These are pretty decent qualities that could have some value on the right team. Bramblegast is able to set spikes quite reliably in the early game, which can benefit teams that are built around spikes as a form of momentum and pressure. Tier 3 patron Colton is a big Bramblegast fan and has sent me a team featuring this funny tumbleweed. Let's take a look at what they've come up with and see if we can test it out and improve it. This will be my last ever Team Doctor video. These videos are the most time consuming things I make and they unfortunately don't get as much attention as my other videos. However, I've added some new Patreon rewards. However, I've added some new Patreon rewards to make up for this. Tier 2 patrons can now send me a team to briefly look at in my next live stream. I'll give my thoughts on the team and make a few few edits. YouTube members can do the same. Tier 2 patrons can also now request a Pokemon for me to cover in a short 4-6 to six minute informative video. Hopefully this is a nice compromise that will let me help more players out with their team building. Thanks again to Colton for the support, and to everyone else who submitted teams for this series. Alright folks, here's the original submission from Colton, and it's an interesting one. First of all, let's talk about the Bramblegast, which actually is not at all what I described in the intro. This is a defensive Bramblegast with mixed defense investment, a bit of HP for the fans, and uh, pain split, grass knot rapid spin. Colton, I'm sorry, but I don't think that this is the way to go with Bramblegast at all. I think that this Pokemon is not a defensive Pokemon. It has a base HP stat of 55, it has poor defenses, it has a typing that is not great in this format. You have so many ghost types, so many dark types, you're threatened by the entire world, really. Gro Grovert Cloak, I guess it can function as a gargantical switch in, but... I mean, many things can function as a Gargantical switch in with a Covert Cloak on. I don't think that this is going to be a widely usable Pokemon for you. That's just my opinion. Uh, but I do think that Bramblegast, as I said in the intro, has some merit as a spike setting lead. Being able to outrun both Great Tusk and Glamora, handle 1v1 situations like the Meowskarada leads that uh, aim to taunt and spike. You can click Rapid Spin against them and see what set they are. Either make one spike and go down, which is not too bad, or completely prevent them from making spikes and win that 1v1 in terms of spike war. I think that that's nice. You've got a Corviknight without defog here, which I actually think is a smart choice because you don't want to defog your spikes away. And the added benefit of having having both Body Press and Brave Bird is very useful. Brave Bird's good against Great Tusk, Body Press good against King Gambit, Roaring Moon, other stuff. Uh, having both attacks is really nice and Corviknight is a great pivot. It fits very well here. Good choice. Now you've got the, the, the regen core, two water type regeners. This is overall a more stally direction than, than what I think Bramblegast should have. I think that Bramblegast should have a more fast-paced team. Maybe you could restructure this and build a different team around the Alamomola and the Toxapex type situation. We've also got an interesting spread on this Goldango with health, special attack, modest, and uh, a little bit of speed. I think that you can get away with... I don't know what this random 12 special... Is that for a purpose? Does that do something? I don't know if that does anything. I don't mind a, set, a spread like this with modest and a bit of speed. You don't have to run max speed. Even though it's the standard, you don't have to run max speed timid on Goldango. It's not super necessary. I don't like the life orb though. I think you go air balloon. Focus Blast is valid. I changed it to Nasty Plot on my on the my variant, which I'll show you shortly. And the Sandy Shocks. I'm going to be honest, I don't know why you've done an HP invested Sandy Shocks. You got to go max special attack, max speed on Sandy Shocks. This is this is an offensive pivot, offensive electric type. It's not really a defensive Pokemon at all. It's not great at it doing such a thing. You like thinking about outside the box cult and you like taking a Pokemon with poor defenses and then giving them defenses. It's it's fun. It's fun to think outside the box, but I think you got to play to the Pokemon's strength. Strengths. You've got to take advantage of the Pokemon's strength as much as possible. So I've made some edits. I'll show you the first version of the squad right here. We have a Sandy Shocks with Terra Fairy Terra Blast, which is a set that I showcased in my Sandy Shocks video that I made. We've got boots on to maximize your potential as a pivot. You don't care about hazards. You don't care about anything. Volt Switch is nice, but the problem with this Sandy Shocks is that uh, it invites in Great Tusk very freely. That's where Terra Fairy comes in. Very nice in some games to just bait in a Great Tusk who thinks they're safe and knock them down with a big super effective Terra Blast. Also does the same to Garchomp. Common Ground type owns them because 
Fairy Beats Dragon. I've tried out a pivoting Meowskarata set. I'm trying out Play Rough on it over the more standard Sucker Punch. I think that this, I thought that this would be a good fit, but there were issues with this that I discovered later, which I'll get into when we show the replays. For the Goldengo, I stuck with your initial idea of the bulkier, modest Goldengo. Sure thing. I think that that can work. No problem with that at all. I think it's modest is a very nice on Goldengo. Really enhances your damage output a lot. I've chucked a Clodsire with Water Absorb on the team, mostly because one, you need a sturdy rock setter. And two, you need an answer to Walking Wake. Walking Wake is everywhere right now. It's dominant. There's an incoming suspect test for Walking Wake. It might, it might not stick around much longer. But at the moment, I think that you need this. I think that you need some sort of answer to Walking Wake. And I think this fits fine. It's another rock setter. It's a special wall. And Terra Fairy helps versus Walking Wake as well, giving you dragon immunity. I've kept the Corviknight. I think that the Corviknight was fine. And we've changed the Bramble Ghast. I'm going with Infiltrator on it. I don't think the Wind Rider gives you much useful immunities in this. In this, it's an immunity to wind-based attacks. I know Heat Wave is one, but nothing gets that. Hurricane, not much gets that. I don't know if uh, this is a really worthwhile ability, but Infiltrate is useful. You can go through subs. And what I've done is Spikes. I think Grass Knot is nice. It hits a lot of stuff. Hits Great Tusk. Hits Garganical, Dondozo, relevant defensive Pokemon, especially Great Tusk, which you outspeed and threaten directly with Grass Knot Stab. Rapid Spin, of course, and Ghost Type Curse, I thought is... I never used it, but uh, looking at this move pool, I figured this was probably the most useful thing you had. Can be nice, you make a spike and then you Ghost Type Curse just to take yourself out and then do something, apply a bit of pressure after that, maybe get a bit of momentum, get Meow in, do stuff. Not sure if there's anything else too relevant. There's like Leech Seed is pretty cool. Not a huge, not really. Shadow Sneak might be nice for some situations. It's probably flexible. You can probably try different stuff. So let's take a look at the replay with this version of the squad up against a Walking Wake team. So nice, nice little opportunity for some practice against the very common Walking Wake. We do the Bramble Ghost lead. They do the Shadow Ball. And unfortunately... Against Dragapult, we do have to just make a spike and go down. And immediately facing a Dragapult, I realized something pretty obvious, which is that our team is a bit slow. We don't have like a Choice Scarfer. We don't have a Dragapult of our own. And a simple enemy Dragapult is causing us a lot of problems. We have nothing that outruns it. My Miascarada doesn't have Sucker Punch on it. I think I go to Clodsire here just because it's a special wall. That's all right. I mean, that's fine. I make rocks. I toxic this. Unfortunately for me, this this player kind of misplayed this, threw away their Dragapult, allowed it to get toxic and just whittled down by me here. Even though it's they should save it because it's really, really strong against me. It threatens absolutely everything. Maybe they don't know my Meow lacks Sucker Punch. That's a bit of hidden info that they, are, they don't understand, but I would still save Dragapult if I was them anyway. We invite an Iron Valiant and I'm frightened of a Psy Shock here, so I... I go to Corv and we take a Psychic. So that's good info that it's Psychic and not Psy Shock. I expected Thunderbolt, so I pivoted to Sandy Shocks. I actually clicked Aura Sphere against my Corviknight, which wouldn't have even done much. Been pretty strange game so far, but we can get Clawed in. I think I do Terra Fairy here just to, to dodge the Psychic, and it's nice. They spend Terra too. That's really nice. We get a Toxic off and we can heal up here. We get our lefties knocked off, but Clawed is going to carry this game. And this should be a nice showcase of Claude being a very good anti-meta Pokemon at the moment with its ability to wall walking wake and even handle situations like this. Helped against Dragapult, helped against Valiant. I think for, for Valiant fans, you want Psy Shock on Valiant purely to hit Claude Sire nicer because Psy Shock hits based on Fizz Def, which Claude Sire has less of. Iron Moth with a speed booster is also threatening the entire world right here. I sacrifice Sandy Shocks for the greater good. To get Claude Sire in safely and get an Earthquake, which will take this out. Now that they've spent Terra, we, we don't have to worry about Terra Grass right there. We also don't have to worry about Terra Flying here, which is nice. And this is why Body Press is really good for this situation. If they've spent Terra, now their Roaring Moon can't beat the Corviknight. And we should be good. I actually clicked a U-turn here so I could get Meow in. Who has Play Rough and threatens Dragonite and Walking Wake immediately. The fact that they went to Walking Wake straight away made me... Oh yeah, right. This is was booster energy. So I was thinking of a different game. So I had to I had to get out of there because of the booster energy forcing me out. But no worries. Claude, absolute savior, lives that flamethrower. And Walking Wake literally can't hit this. This is why Claude hard counters this. Literally immune to water and dragon. 
and takes peanuts from flamethrower and terror blast so it's going to heal us up thank you very much and that this will just uh, clean up the game obviously we will be toxic stall i actually was gaming a little bit here one sec we go we go balloon goldie on the earthquake and then we go clod sire on the dragon claw for the fans of course and then we <laughs> we take out the dragonite funny little end game there so I made some alterations after that game, folks. We replaced the Meowskerata with a Dragapult. I figured we need something faster, a little bit more immediately threatening than a simple Boots Meowskerata. We need something hard hitting to take advantage of spikes and stuff. It's also a pivot with U-turns, so I thought that fit here. And I thought I'd try out Rotom Wash over Corviknight, which turned out to be worse, but I did try it. Let's take a look at the replay. And this is an odd team from the enemy. I think Floor just must be some anti-walking wake technology. I know that's a fairy type with good special defense, which there aren't many of in the current meta, so that might be anti-walking wake technology right there. We're making a lot of spikes against this Hydreigon. I clicked spin because Hydreigon can have both taunt and stealth rock, so that's a way to play around that. If he clicks taunt, I can actually click uh, curse at least, and rapid spin buffs my speed so I can respond. Dragapult invites in Corviknight right there. I go Sandy Shocks. The spikes aren't showing up. Forgive me for that. Well, it's not my fault, but forgive me anyway. I'll take responsibility for it. We're doing some maneuvers. I do end up losing this game, by the way, folks. Spoilers. Uh, this enemy team here pokes some holes in my in my squad. This Hydra Gun proved to be very threatening. We've got a Clod and... It's Water Absorb. It's not Unaware because... Walking Awake is forcing Water Absorb on me. I can't hit this because it's got Levitate. I'm in a bit of a pickle against this sub-nasty Plot Hydragon. This is like anti-anti-meta. This is destroys the Water Absorb Clod. It's it's immune to Earthquake. It's immune to Toxic. And then I try to do a Draco Meteor through the su sub with Infiltrator, but of course it's Hydragon with Terra Steel, which was expected. Terra Fairy, Terra Steel, something like that. But I don't think a Terra Ghost Shadow Ball would have dropped this either. Following this battle, I made another tweak. I changed the Dragapult from a Choice Spec set to a Choice Band set. This is nice for a few reasons. We lacked a physical attacker on the team. It was all special. Sandy Shocks, Goldengo, and Dragapult were all special. But I think we needed a physical attacker. We also get Sucker Punch, which is nice. U-Turn will deal more damage. And we have a nice Wall Breaker, a nice source of offensive pressure, which I think we needed. Let's take a look at the final replay here featuring the banned Dragapult. And this is a replay that showcased another issue with the team that I will explain later. We do the Bramblegoss lead situation. We click rapid spin against this Meow here. If it was a lead Meow, we would win this 1v1 because now we're faster. If they clicked Taunt, if they clicked Spike, we would beat both of those options. We will be able to deny their spikes while chipping them down, erasing their sash. Even though it wasn't that, we still get to make a spike in the process, which is not the worst. We chip the meow a little bit. We scout the situation. But this is the problem, which is, uh, I foolishly replaced the Corviknight with a Rotom Wash, which I realized opened me up to be weak to Meowskarada. Corviknight is a great switch in against Meowskarada. Rotom Wash is obviously weak to grass. We managed to get around that in this battle by luckily landing a will-o-wisp here a more astute opponent would not have allowed such a thing uh realizing that meow was an important piece and threatens absolutely everything on the team uh but they just went for the knock i guess that they they crit through this this rotom with that knockoff also the fact that they became dark type after that protein means that they don't have grass stab anymore so flower trick would have done about 50 something i could live in will-o-wisp but no worries we crisis averted a little bit there. We burn the big threat. And unfortunately, I miss a will o -Wisp against this, probably expecting a Volt Switch, but I didn't do it. I wanted to burn the Toxapex because it can just shrug off the Volt with a regen. We get Dragapult in, and I, w I just go in for Terra Dragon because I realized that this kind of threatens everything. There's no Fairy type on the squad except maybe a potential Terra Fairy on Garganical. So the Terra Dragon Dragon Dance absolutely goes in. This is where I raised my eyebrow. You go straight to Walking Wake. I fear that you're going to tear a fairy or you're scarfed. So I exit. I think it was scarfed. Uh, nice thing about this, we can take the Draco and you are locked in, presumably. So I can now make rocks, chip heal up a bit. Clod, proving to be a reliable guy. We are immune to water and toxic. So we can just sit here against Toxapex and Earthquake it down. I predicted Great Tusk coming in and I toxic here which is really nice. Now Goldengo can come in. 
and not mind even if it gets a knockoff because this great tusk is slowly getting chipped down by toxic and we're closer to keeping spikes here spikes and rock here permanently Bramblegast doing its job we're keeping a momentum with the goldie opponent is unable to take out these hazards and i went to dragapult here because i figured against the volcarona dragapult i think can live a plus one whatever from volcarona many of these sets are like bulky sets with morning sun and only fiery dance as the attack so worst case is they have will-o-wisp and will-o-wisp me and then that's a problem but maybe clodsai can wall them anyway and if they don't have will-o-wisp i probably live ahead and just take the, the volcarona out which did happen that was a crit as well but we just take out volcarona with the dragon darts and dragapult looking very nice here we force in the presumably scarf walking wake once again and this looks like smooth sailing from here easy earthquake chip down anything can never be a bad choice we go to goldie we don't even care if goldengo dies at this point because we get guaranteed to keep our spikes it's actually ice spinner on that interestingly even with this slow goldengo we outrun that great tusk we do want a bit of creep to outrun the the defensive great tusks and a simple make it rain will drop this garganical cheese roid shuckle with a with a fantastic wind condition here and there you go the team proving pretty effective and the final change i made i don't even think i needed to test after this i think this was the final one simply put the corvanite back the corvanite was fine before the rotom wash was never really an improvement i think only thing i changed was lefties because i think we need a bit more sturdiness on this you know stick around a bit longer act more as a defensive pivot but i do like that the set without defog body press helps a lot can actually switch in against meow can switch in against great tusk iron treads whatever various things corvanite is what we need to run the team out defensively it was better than rotom wash from the beginning we don't need will-o-wisp on this squad we're fine without it and i think this is pretty cool yeah hope you enjoyed the team i arrived at colton it's a bit different from what you were using. I think your team, honestly, was a bit all over the place. Didn't want to, didn't know if it was trying to be offensive or defensive. And was using Sandy Shocks and Bramblegast as defensive Pokemon, which is not their strong suit. Bramblegast, spike setting quickly. Sandy Shocks pivoting, offensive damage output. Thank you very much for the support, patrons. Forgive me for cancelling the Team Doctor series. Unfortunately, it's it's gotten a bit draining to make these videos, honestly. They take a lot of work and testing and stuff also people don't really watch them unfortunately i wish more people liked this type of thing but they they just simply don't unfortunately but that's the way of the world of course where am i i've disappeared there i am thank you guys hope you like the new rewards i came up with i want to make it worthwhile to become a patron or a member or whatever by actually like doing something for you woohoo folks pokemon's fun you guys having fun you like bramblegast how novel how interesting thank you everybody I'll see you later.